In this video, we learn about the working of rotary encoder and the quadrature decoder. So let's start. This is the regular disclaimer, always refer to the official documentation. Then, rotary encoder. Rotary encoder is a device that converts angular position or a motion of a shaft or axle uh, that we call into analog or digital output signals. Meaning, when we rotate the shaft or the uh, uh, shaft or the uh, axle of this rotary encoder, it will convert it will convert the those into digital signals. So here, this is the rotary encoder P mod that I made. So I'll link this in the description also. If you want, you can make it on your own or you can uh, buy it from the Digilens website. Some common places where we find this rotary encoder are these three things. First one is the volume control. You might have used uh, uh, some uh, some uh, what they call it CD players or some MP3 players wherein you have we have the volume control. Uh, you can keep on rotating it, like it won't stop. Uh, usually, when you have potentiometers in olden uh, players, uh, it will stop like from low to high. It will stop in between. That's all. Like you can't uh, rotate it all together. But whereas the rotary encoders, you can keep on rotating it. The other famous uh, device that we use is mouse. So in mouse also, you the scroll is nothing but a rotary encoder. So in mouse also it's used. And also in oscilloscope, we have these knobs, right? These knobs which are used for, uh, you know, adjusting the x and y positions, x and y axis uh, data. Uh, uh, even in those places, we have rotary encoders. All these things are rotary encoders only. These are a few famous places. Uh, but these are mainly used in motor feedback, uh, like feedback in CNC's and motors, wherein we get the feedback of whether the motor is rotating or not, and things like that in robotic applications, etc. This is the uh, uh, this is what uh, rotary encoder is. Now let's move on. The working of rotary encoder. In the working, we have two outputs: output A and output B. Basically. Uh, what happens is when you rotate the shaft or the axle of the rotary encoder we have the signals alternating that is uh, this one will be uh, say ground and then this one would be a VCC we give VCC and ground separately to the rotary encoder here we have plus and ground right so we have VCC and ground given separately so uh, one of one of these would be having VCC and the other would be having ground as you rotate it, uh, the signal starts, uh, the, the output signal starts pulsating. So what happens is, uh, one, one output would be uh, 90 degree out of phase with the other output. That is, the, uh, that is how the output behaves. That is, when you rotate, when you rotate the axle of the rotary encoder, one output will be 90 degree out of phase with the other output. In that way, you can use, use this rotary encoder to count, uh, to increment some counter. Say we have some uh, counter value, so that you can increment or decrement it based on the direction. So how do you find the direction? So we know that it is out of phase with one another. Either you can count the uh, rising edge and falling edge or the number of pulses and based on that you can change the counter value. The counter value you can change based on the uh, position of the two uh, outputs. Now, for example, say uh, this wave has is going from 0 to 1, that is it's falling and then rising. When it's falling and rising, in that interval, if the second wave is falling, that is from 1 to 0, then it means that the rotary encoder is, is rotated in the clockwise direction and you can increment the counter. And this opposite, the, the exact opposite of this, where, where when it's rising when the uh, first wa output wave is rising from 0 to 1 uh, the second wave is just in the uh, in one uh, in high position it means that it is uh, rotating in the it, it has been rotated in the counter clockwise direction so you can decrement the counter so this is how the rotary encoder works so number of pulses would be the count value which can be incremented or decremented based on the count direction whether you are rotating it in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction We'll analyze uh, more how to uh, do this in the upcoming slides. So in the next slide, we'll see how we can 
uh, check the uh, working of the rotary encoder using a simple oscilloscope. As you can see here, I'm using the red pitaya as the oscilloscope. I've connected the two probes to the uh, rotary encoder's output. Now you will see that as I rotate the rotary encoder, rotate the rotary encoder, I'm getting some signals here. Now let us see the captured signals and analyze them. These are the captured signals. Uh, in this waveform, you can see that uh, you can observe exactly in this position. <coughs> when we have uh, one signal in the zero, the other, uh, that is the first signal, when it is zero, you can see that the second signal, it's go, uh, having the uh, falling edge, meaning this is ro uh, rotated in the clockwise direction. <coughs> so uh, the next diagram, you can see that uh, when it is um, the z in the low position, in the zero position, the first output waveform, the second one is having its rising edge, meaning that it is rotated in the anti-clockwise direction, not the counter-clockwise direction. So from these waveforms, we can confirm that our rotary encoder is working perfectly. Let's move on. How to process this signal? So the signal out, uh, the output signal obtained need to be processed in order to, uh, you know, increase the count value and the, and also to know the count direction. The answer is quadrature decoder. Rotary encoder meaning uh, the device is encoding something. The, it's encoding the angular position. So we need to decode it, right? So we are having uh, uh, we are having a circuit called as a quadrature decoder. So we have two flip flops, D flip flops, and then two XOR gates. This is very simple. We have we have the two outputs and one clock. Uh, we'll we'll uh, analyze it in the next lecture. So. It is very simple. We have the clock signal given to both the D flip flops. So we have the rising and falling edge of the clock. We have the output of the quadrature decoder, 90 degree out of phase, these two, 90 degree out of phase. And then once these are given to the flip flops, the flip flop will delay, delay these by uh, a clock cycle. So uh, one clock cycle. So uh, you can see that quad A delayed is one clock cycle delayed and quad B delayed is one clock cycle delayed. So we have uh, the Q of these two as delayed signals here and then we have count, count enable and count direction as the output of this circuit. First what happens is let's analyze this waveform. We have quad A and then quad B here and then quad A delayed and quad B delayed. The count direction has one input as quad A and the other input as quad B delayed XOR. So XOR these two and you will get the count direction. So in count direction, quad A and quad B delayed. Quad A is 1 and then quad B delayed is 0. So 1 XR 0 is 1. The same way, then again, you have uh, quad A as 1 and quad B delayed as 0 up to this position. So uh, till this, the count direction will be 1. Whereas here, quad B delayed and quad A both are 1. So uh, count direction will become 0. So this is, this is how direction is uh, found, direction is calculated and ca for count enable, it is the XR of four values, quad A, quad B, quad A delayed and quad B delayed. So we have count enable, the similar way you can calculate it from here. And thus, when count uh, when you have the count direction as one and the count enable is also one, you need to start counting, meaning increment the counter. So it is incremented from 0, 0 to 0, 1. Again, in this place, when you have count enable is as 1 and count direction is also as 1, it is incremented 0, 2. Same way here, both are 1, 0, 3. So if at all count enable is 1 and count direction is 0, this will be decremented from 3 to 2. This is how the quadricer decoder circuit works. Whereas in real life, the thing is that the clocks will not the clock will not be synchronized the clock will not be synchronized with the quad a or quad b therefore in order to avoid the metastability in the counter we are using uh, we are having some extra d flip flops to avoid uh, metastability in the counter so that's it the uh, working of the quadrature decoder next in our lab in the next lab we will be implementing the quadrature decoder in the programmable logic, in the programmable logic of the uh, FPGA. So uh, the, how it works is, uh, already we have 
these peripherals right these peripherals and the microblades processor in the block design we will write a verilog code to implement this quadrature decoder logic and that verilog code we will add as a verilog module into the programmable logic the same way we added the not gate in the uh, very first lab for the processor system reset if you have watched it you will know that so the same way we will be including the verilog module for the quadrature decoder so what's next lab 5 the next lab will be on modifying the block design vivado to interface the rotary encoder that is the adding ha hardware part wherein we add the verilog module of the quadrature decoder circuit and then we'll write the code to interface the rotary encoder in xilinx sdk after that we'll have we'll be having the final lab and the final lab and the end of this module would be to display the count value and direction of the rotary encoder in lcd so these are few resources uh, either you can buy the uh, digilent pmod rotary encoder or you can make it on your own so that's it thanks for watching